Good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's forum for the District 2 County Commissioner race. My name is Steve Henson. I'm the managing editor at the Pueblo Chieftain, one of the sponsors of tonight's event, along with the Governance Task Force of the 2020 Commission and Pueblo Community College's Center for New Media. A few of the ground rules. Uh, each candidate will have an opportunity to introduce themselves to you, then they will answer a series of questions, and we'll go back and forth, and then we'll have the opportunity after that to have closing remarks. We would ask that uh, no signs are allowed in this room, so if you start waving a sign, um, uh, one of the officers will uh, help you to your car. And um, <laughs> we, we do, uh, we, you know, we encourage you to support your candidate, that's fine. You can clap and hoop and holler and whatever, but we would ask that you would be respectful towards um, the other candidate as well. Um, this is a, a really a sacrifice for someone to run for public office, and we do the, owe them a debt of gratitude for being willing to do that. A lot of people aren't willing to do that. And so those are kind of the rough ground rules, and uh, so let's get started. Um, Garrison won the coin toss, and he elected to conclude. It's going to be one of those nights, isn't it? <laughs> okay. All right. Officers, officers. Okay. Okay. Um, anyway, he did win the coin toss, and that means that he gets to select between starting and finishing, and he chose to conclude the event tonight. So we'll have opening remarks from Brian Mader. Brian? Thank you, Steve. Good evening. My name is Brian Mader. I'm your candidate for Public County Commissioner. I want to thank the Chieftain and PCC for sponsoring tonight's forum. I want to acknowledge my opponent, and I look forward to this forum concerning the many important issues we face today. I'm very happy to be here tonight to continue my mission to make Pueblo County a place where we can live safely, have ultimate job opportunities, and outstanding schools. As many of you know, this is my fourth campaign for office. Although I'm not, I was not elected, I was not discouraged. I did not disappear from the public view. Instead, after every campaign, I got more involved and more committed to getting to know Pueblo and understanding the challenges that we face. I'm now the current board president for a local charter school here in Pueblo, the vice president of the Pueblo Association of Home Builders. I serve on the 10th Judicial District Performance Commission and the Pueblo Human Relations Commission. Some ask why. It's easy. I love this community. I'm committed to our future, and I'm committed to work hard. In fact, I started my working career at 14 years of age. Today, I'm an owner of two small businesses right here in Pueblo. There's an opportunity and success waiting for all who are willing to work to achieve it. As your county commissioner, I want to play a, crit a critical role in establishing an atmosphere that is maximized business opportunities, eliminates roadblocks without sacrificing safety or a quality of life. I have no illusions. County commissioner is not a simple job. It's not an easy job. But like I said before, I'm no stranger to challenges. And I'm no stranger to hard work. I also know that we can and we must come together as, as a team to get our country move, our county moving it forward and to find solutions for our community problems. This is about a need of cooperation and communication among city council members and county commissioners and all other elected officials because elected officials are servant of the public. We must recognize and accept that leadership is not exclusive to one government agency we must also work together. I want to emphasize this is not about political parties. This is about Pueblo County. Pueblo has too much to offer to let our citizens, resources, and opportunities go unfulfilled. I have the desire, the knowledge, skills, and experience to be part of a team that takes Pueblo County to a brighter future. Thank you. My name is Brian Mater, and I look forward to earning your support tonight. And we'll now have opening remarks from Garrison Ortiz. Good evening. I would first like to thank uh, the Pueblo Chieftain, our moderator tonight, and all of the sponsors for tonight's forum. Uh, I'd also like to thank all those in attendance tonight and those viewing from home. I consider it a real privilege to be here on this stage tonight uh, because when I first showed interest in running for this office, uh, some thought that our chances might be slim. And if you recall from the primary election, I was even told at some point uh, to wait my turn to run for this office. Well, I chose not to wait my turn. And since the inception of this campaign, 
I've been greeted with a groundswell of support um, from all political parties across this community that have said that they are ready for new ideas, fresh perspective, and someone with a budgeting and finance background finally uh, running the county. And this community uh, will also tell you that they are tired of the same people running for office again and again. And I think that that is one clear difference in this race. Uh, in this election, you have a candidate that is running for office for the fourth time. And I commend Mr. Mater for running because uh, campaigns and politics, they're tough. But on the other hand, I've been committed to this office from the very start because I feel that there is a clear difference between those who run and really want to be elected and those who uh, run because they genuinely want to serve their community. And if afforded the opportunity to serve you as county commissioner, I intend to make public safety a top priority and work hand in hand with the sheriff and the district attorney, both who have endorsed my efforts in this race. I will also work to implement a five to seven year capital improvement plan to bring a proactive approach to the budgeting of capital projects and investments. I also intend to work with law enforcement, health care professionals, and community members to combat our local heroin epidemic. And I intend to advocate for outstanding care to our veterans and make fiscal decisions with our senior citizens always in mind. Now, regardless where you happen to sit on some of the most contentious issues on the ballot this November, or regardless which candidates you happen to support for the federal, state, or local races, uh, we need to find a way to put decency, dignity, and respect back into our political environment. And as a county commissioner, I intend to do exactly that. I will respect and listen to all opinions with an open and logical mind, because I think that's exactly what we've been missing. Someone that can hear well beyond parties or politics, someone who understands that our greatest victories are not born in division, that they are born in unity. My name is Garrison Ortiz, and I know this need for change. I feel this need for change because I am born, raised, and educated right here in Pueblo, Colorado. I was raised on the south side of town by a mother and grandparents who I'm blessed to have here tonight. And I hold an MBA from our local university, and I've worked as a senior consultant for premier private and public sector organizations. And yes, I have been entrusted to work on multi-million dollar budgets to now over one and a half billion. And before my consulting career, I worked as a case manager for Public Rape Crisis Services, where I advocated every day for victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. I'm here tonight to show you that I am the candidate running for this office as their first choice. I am the candidate that best understands the challenges and opportunities that our community faces and I am the candidate that will move this community forward with integrity and do so with heart. I am here tonight to humbly ask to earn your vote to be your next county commissioner, not simply because I want to be elected, but because I genuinely want to lead the community that I love so very much. Thank you. Brian, you'll handle the first question tonight. As recently as last week, there were 781 inmates at the Pueblo County Jail. That's about twice capacity in a pretty old building. Do you feel like the county needs a new jail? And how would you get that done? Or are there, are there other options that we should look at? Thank you for the question. Absolutely, a jail is a, is, is a must to establish law and order within our community. The law enforcement every single day is fighting with no four hour holds. They can't go out there and, and get respect within the community because there's not a place that if somebody breaks the law, they can take them to. The, the biggest issue is, is first is parenting. We have to, in order, we have to parent our kids in order to move our, our kids forward so they're not breaking the law, so they're not. But if they're not, and the government has to get involved, we have to be able to prosecute them fairly, put them in, an, in a facility like a, a public county jail. We have to use this and we have to build it correctly. We have to be responsible when we build this institution and look at the long-term future of this, of this jail. Uh, the biggest thing that I see is, is, of course, the funding. It's gonna be the hardest thing out there. The citizens have already voted down tax increases. This doesn't mean that the citizens do not want public safety. They want us to do it responsibly. They want us to live within our means. If that means taking items out of the budget and moving them over here to fund a jail, that's what we need to do. I hope that I can work with the Sheriff's Department, the Sheriff, the District Attorney, 
and also the Pueblo Police Department to come up with a source to fund this jail. I think one of the sources is, is bonding after the health department is paid for. We can probably go after some bonding and get the jail funded that way. We can also, we have some marijuana money that possibly could be out there. We have some other revenues, but we need to fund the jail properly and we need to make sure that it has a long-term range. Thank you. Garrison? As I've stated before, um, I think there are two models under which a new jail will be built. It will either be built because we as a county find a way to build one or because we're forced federally to do so. But I think everybody understands the importance of building uh, a new jail. But one point I'd like to make when it comes to this issue, I think what's often forgotten is not just the infrastructure of the jail that we intend to fund, uh, but the lives of Pueblo County employees that go to the jail every single day that are put at risk uh, with this failing infrastructure. Uh, but when we look at how to build a jail, and as Mr. Mater mentioned tonight, and uh, I'll also quote uh, a May 7th uh, edition of the Pueblo Chieftain. Uh, when speaking on the jail, uh, Mr. Mater stated, I don't like tax increases. I think we can go into the budget to figure a way to basically build a new jail. And as you stated tonight, moving a couple things around in the budget um, might be an option. I may have a financially keen eye, but I'm pretty certain that we're not going to find uh, $100 million just laying around in the general fund. I'm pretty sure that that was not overlooked. Um, a solution that I, I have and that will bring uh, relief now before we're able to build uh, a jail in the future is resurrecting an idea <clears throat> that was brought uh, forth before the sheriff back in 2014, and that's utilizing some space at the state hospital. I believe it's building 20, uh, which is the old forensics unit, and utilizing that space and renting it from the state. Uh, the best thing about that is not only does it help us augment the capacity of the current jail, but it also allows us to begin to house uh, federal inmates, DOC inmates, and municipals also, bringing in new revenue streams anywhere from uh, 30 to 60 or 70 dollars a day. Um, if we can bring in new revenues to help pay for a new jail and leverage a model that's worked up north in the past, I think that's uh, definitely a smart option. But we need to be specific about how uh, we intend to uh, fund a jail that I agree is greatly needed. Brian, any other thoughts? Absolutely. The state hospital was was a model that we all looked at. I, had, I spoke to uh, Sheriff Taylor regarding that, that model. He said that there was some issues with it, some federally issues with it. It wasn't really brought up to standard. I guess my question is, is why wait until we're forced to build a jail? Why not do it now and come up with an idea? If it takes moving money around in the budget, living within our means, why not start now to build this jail? I don't think that we should have built a million dollar, or $50 million judicial plaza that is 50% full at this time when a jail's been needed for 30 years. You also state that you have a seven-year plan, a capital plan. You've spoke this at your last debate. What is that plan? Let's hear it. Rebuttal? So I'll address a couple of those uh, comments. First off, um, as I stated, we need to be specific on how we intend to build a jail now. I'm sure if we could build it, you know, from a financial perspective today, I think most folks would be for it. Um, but when you go through the budget, that money just isn't there today. Um, but when we talk about, uh, the other thing mentioned was the state hospital option. Um, the reason that wasn't brought up uh, to standard was because we never invested the money to do so. Uh, that's still an option. And if we do invest, it was about one to two million dollars in the past probably have to look back here in 2016 and see how much that is today. Um, and when we talk about, and I'll take a little time to address the five to seven year capital improvement plan question. Uh, five to seven year capital improvement plan is a long range plan that basically lays out all the capital investments that a government needs. I've worked on these and seen them uh, in, different, uh, in different projects throughout my career as a consultant. And what it does, if nothing else, is it provides an overall outline of what we intend to fund, what we, how we intend to finance it, what the budget needs are, and what the, what the economic impacts are to the community. Um, and it's a plan that I've discussed with um, the heads of finance and budgeting and, uh, and other commissioners, and I think it's something that, uh, it's a lack of uh, long-range planning that we've needed for some time. Okay. 
quick. We have 781 inmates at the Pueblo County Jail. A lot of those are on hold for DOC. Maybe it's time that we meet with the state legislators, the senators, the state representatives, and find out how we can get funding to bring that money from the state level and put it in our Pueblo County Jail. Maybe we need to come together as a, as a team with the state representative. I will do that. Elected, once elected, I will work with the state representatives, the senators, to find out how we can get funding at the state level and bring that money back so we're not waiting on a seven-year plan. We're building a jail now before we're fined or have Department of Correction or DOs, um, Department of Justice complaints or, or lawsuits from inmates. And the most important is the safety of our employees out there. Okay, last rebuttal on this topic, Garrison. Sure. If we're going to work with those in the state legislature, then we should um, be looking to address uh, an underlying problem, and that is the fact that our county jail isn't the only one across the state that's becoming overcrowded. Uh, that same problem is being realized across the state of Colorado, and that has to do with an underlying problem with the judicial system up at the state level um, that has to do with the time it's taking for inmates to go from a county jail to uh, and being sent to a prison. Um, so I think that's something that we also need to look at if we're going to work with our friends up uh, at the state level. Okay. okay. Our next question, Garrison, you'll handle it first. Uh, the Pueblo County Commissioners, the current commissioners, have come under fire for the way they've handled uh, setting up marijuana stores in Pueblo County. And now, of course, voters are going to decide whether to continue that. What's your stance on ballot question 200? And how would you confront some of the other marijuana issues that have arisen in the county? Sure. Uh, the retail marijuana question is a very important issue. Uh, and I've remained consistent on my position uh, since the inception of my campaign. Uh, first off, I feel the retail marijuana question should have been put to a ballot immediately after Amendment 64 passed in 2012 primarily because I felt that this would have drawn consensus across the community and allowed us to move forward in a very predictable way. Uh, now, that we've opted in, now that we've opted in, there are a large number of jobs that have been created and there has been a lot of economic activity that's spurred in related industries. I would like to move forward with the retail marijuana industry from here with making some uh, changes that I definitely feel are needed. Uh, for example, to be specific, I would like to break out the retail marijuana uh, revenue into a separate fund. I feel this will address the transparency issue and the way that money is collected and the way in which it is spent. Um, we also had some conversation in the primary about the Marijuana Liquor and Licensing Board. Um, I would like to see the ability for a county commissioner to be able to um, appeal the decision of the lower board if we saw that there was an error necessary. And the primary reason is because the buck, the buck stops with the county commissioners. Ultimately, we're the ones who are responsible for that decision. Uh, now, if it happens uh, to go, um, then we aggressively need to go to work on the budget, find other revenue streams, and uh, do a really good job of reforecasting revenues for the current fiscal year and for out years. But the underlying point this November is that this is on the ballot. Ultimately, you, the people, will decide. You will tell us how to do your jobs. So when you're trying to decide which county commissioner candidate to vote for as it pertains to marijuana, which is a very polarizing thing right now, um, I think you should look at three things. Who has presented a clear plan for both scenarios? Which candidate has a budgetary background to go to work on the budget when needed? And who has remained consistent on this issue from the very beginning? And I think I've made it clear that uh, I'm the candidate that has, uh, has done all of those things. Brian? Well, unlike my opponent, um, I was quoted in the Public Chieftain that I thought it was a bad idea to have marijuana in the community. Um, I also went out there and took a look and I researched different ideas. I looked at both sides. I looked at the pros, the anti, everybody that was for it. In 2012, Amendment 64 was voted on and passed here in Pueblo County. A total vote of 75,099 people voted in that race. 33,357 people were against it. 41,742 were for Amendment 64. Amendment 64 is kind of unique. It has a clause where a city or a county can opt in or opt out. As everybody's aware, the city basically is putting that to the voters this year. But our current county commissioners decided we're all in. 
They didn't talk to anybody. They just went out there, threw it on the table, and said, we're going to town. We're putting marijuana. I went to many houses. I went to many meetings where people were upset because dispensaries were in their community. But here's what we also know. The numbers we have on retail sales in 2014 were $1.6 million. In 2015, it was $1.7 million. Around 3.5 million annually in excise taxes were collected. Many local contractors seen the local boom of Amendment 64 along with a lot of realtors. In 2015, 39.5% of the commercial building permits in the city and county were related to marijuana. The county building expenditures in the public county due to marijuana is estimated over at $14 million. Now here's the question. Now the numbers we don't know. How are we going to keep it away from our use? Our use are using it at a record pace now. What's the actual impact on our youth? What's the health impact now, 10 years, 15 years, and 20 years from now? What's the true numbers of the homeless coming to Pueblo and Pueblo County? Is it for the marijuana or is it for the low cost of living? But most important, what's the impact of our sheriff's office and our police department? Now the clause in Amendment 64 states if there's any questions in Amendment 64 with this issue, we can send it to the voters. I will support what the voters approve this November. Thank you. Garrison, rebuttal? Sure. I think that, you know, that's great history and education on kind of how we ended up here. I'm going to reiterate one point that I made that I would have put it to a countywide vote immediately in 2012 to get that consensus across the county. Um, but we need to be specific because with any ballot initiative, you can have two outcomes. And I think we need to be specific about what we intend to do in either situation. And I've been very specific about ways I intend to introduce transparency, work with law enforcement, um, and on the other side, you know, what will lend itself very well uh, to my budgeting background if it happens to go. Um, so ultimately, I think we agree on the fact that we will respect the uh, outcome of the political process in November, but I think we should ask ourselves who has the skills, who has the tools, and the specific plans of what to do in either situation. Yeah. Ryan, rebuttal? With all due respect, Mr. Ortiz, what's your stance on the ballot initiative? What is your stance on what's going on out there in the community? Are you for marijuana or are you against it? We understand it's going to go to the voters. I was quoted in the newspaper as being against it. I went out there and researched with the different dispensaries, the different grow facilities. I went out there and did my research to have an educated idea of what was going on on both sides of this issue. What's your stance? Are you for it or are you against it? Let me reiterate from when I first answered this question, and that is the fact that I would like to move forward with the industry. But what I've also laid out is a plan for um, the outcome of the vote in both scenarios. So I, I think that's very important, and I've told you more importantly, not. Um, I've told you what I intend to do in both situations. So I'd like to move forward with the industry with making the changes that I feel are needed. Um, if the repeal happens to go through, I have a plan uh, in that case as well. Okay. Last rebuttal, Brian? No, thank you. Okay. Okay. I have a couple of other things related to the election. County Commissioner Sal Pace and City Councilman Bob Schilling are talking about consolidation of the two governments. Brian, do you think that consolidation of the city and county governments is a good idea, and why or why not? I do not think it's a good idea. I think if we were going to do that idea, we should have done it 40, 50 years ago. Um, we just spent millions of dollars on a judicial building that, I frankly, I don't think we needed. It's 50 percent full. I think we should have focused to the jail. I do believe that we should consolidate different departments within the community. Um, maybe have the dispatch, which was tried once before with the city and the sheriff's department and fire, but there was a problem with it. It did not have real leadership in there running that department. Um, what, I, what I mean by that is, is if a city call came in and there was a, a, a county employee that was there to answer the telephone, that county employee would wait for the city official to answer that phone. It created a nightmare in it. I'd like to see some real, real leadership within that department. I'd like to combine the dispatch first, rework that idea, also the fleet, I think we can go if we buy with the city idea and the county idea of buying some oil, 
buying cars and have a, a lot stronger presence within the community and say, hey, instead of buying five cars to the city this year and maybe three next year, why not combine them and buy them all at once and see if we can have a savings? It's just a responsible idea. I don't think that the, uh, large, the large investment up front is going to be really, really a financial impact on our community. If we're going to spend that type of money, I, I'd like to see if us invest the money in energy or, or create our own energy so we can lower the bills here in Pueblo for our residents. Garrison? Sure. When it comes to uh, the consideration of a full-blown uh, city-county consolidation, I think it's important that we first uh, defer back to the study that was done uh, following the 1998 initiative that was put out to the voters. Um, that was studied for approximately three years, and there were some findings uh, consolidated into a report in May 2002. Um, I'd actually like to refer back to that um, because I think there's a couple recommendations that came from that report that are valuable that we have not actually implemented. Um, if we want the city and the county to work together, um, one, of the, one of the recommendations was having quarterly meetings. I think at least semi-annual meetings would be a good start. Um, if you want us, to, uh, the city and the county, to work together, then having us at the same table is a, is a great start. Um, the, uh, the highlight of that report that I picked out was, you know, the voice of our rural communities, um, the voice of residents in uh, Colorado City, Beulah, and Rye. Um, some of these folks feel like their uh, voice isn't as strong as it needs to be as is. So I think that should be a paramount consideration when we talk about uh, a city-county consolidation. Uh, another finding was proper employee evaluations. Um, you know, I think we often look at saying, we don't have enough, we need more. Well, when they said we need proper employee evaluations, um, you know, it told us that we need proper employee evaluations. We need to look at how efficiently we're using personnel in the county, which is our most valuable resource. I have a budgeting background, I know process, I know personnel budgeting, and I think I bring a great management perspective to the county. Uh, overall, when we look at this issue, it's gonna require a lot of people, time, and resources, all of which are constrained at the moment. Um, it's, you know, if folks want to study it again, that's okay. Uh, but I think there's a lot of preceding things that we can do in the meantime. I think what we really need is a city and a county cooperation. My observation is to, is, is we need a cooperation between the city and the county commissioners and, and all other elected officials. All are servant of the public and not elected by a body and unto itself. All have to be recognized that leadership is not exclusive to one entity. And as the elected officials go, so goes Pueblo County. Thank you. Okay. Garrison, anything else? No. Okay. We'll move on to the next question. And Garrison, you'll handle this one first. The county has put a ballot question 1A for voters to consider, and that is the retention of some $45 million over the next 10 years that they are getting. It's really a windfall from expiring tax credits. Do you support question 1A? Why or why not? Sure. Uh, I do support question 1A, um, but I think we need to defer back to um, why we're in this situation. What does the Tabor formula actually dictate? Uh, the Tabor formula states that county revenue growth must remain equal or less than to uh, prior year calendar inflation plus annual local growth. Um, and where working within this formula can be troublesome for a county, and it's not just Pueblo County, it's across the state right now. Um, is when county revenues dip because of tough economic times and we begin to see a trend upward in revenues due to uh, when economic conditions begin to brighten. Uh, this is where the ratcheting effect that we often hear about becomes a major problem uh, because when county revenues decline in recessionary years, uh, those revenues are budgeted down to a permanent uh, level. That new lower level is then used uh, for the next years um, to apply to the Tabor formula for next year. Uh, I see ballot initiative 1A as a way to give Pueblo County a way to essentially continue to recover uh, from the recession that hit in 2008 and, and hit again in 2011 when our sales tax uh, decreased. Um, but ultimately, we're going to have this problem for years to come. Uh, beginning already in 2017 when the $4.1 million that was paid uh, to Vestas for infrastructure improvements in 2009 will be repaid. And also, as we know, with the expiring uh, tax incentive agreements that will uh, expire beginning in 2021. Uh, I think the underlying point is that we, if we want to continue to uh, recover from the, the recession, take advantage of some long overdue financial windfalls 
And if we want to continue to build our community, I think 1A is a good option to do so. One A sounds very, very good. But after reading the public chieftain tonight on the uh, app, there coming into the, the forum, I noticed that the uh, PUC decided that they were going to go ahead and increase our rates once again. Uh, you know, a lot of people said, "Oh, it's sixty dollars a year. It's seventy dollars a year. That's a lot of money." I, I put some food on the table, some, some uh, maybe a movie for somebody. Uh, this is thirty to forty dollars it takes out of their their pocket. I cannot support 1A the way it's written, and I'll tell you why. If we're going to do 1A, why don't we put it towards the jail? We're trying to find the money for the jail. Here's $45 million over 10 years to support the jail. Here it is. If, uh, I don't think we need a downtown youth sports complex. We have Runyon Field. Uh, the St. Charles Mesa Community Center, that's, that's great. But if the kids cannot afford to get there because the parents don't have gas to put in the car, it's not going to happen. <laughs> Pueblo West Parks. We have parks now. Two years ago, we were, we were closing down the bathrooms. We couldn't mow the yards. We were taking the trash cans away. I think we need to refocus 1A, send it to the voters, let the voters look at it. But I think it needs to have the gel on there, more important. Garrison? Sure. I'd like to add on to, uh, to this initiative. I think that was the question posed to us. Um, so if this initiative passes, then I think what's going to be critical at that time is a county commissioner is a leader that can work in terms of the financing of these projects and the timing of these projects over a 10-year span. Because if this, if this does pass, um, I would argue that essentially what you're looking at is uh, somewhat of a capital improvement plan. Those projects are not set in stone right now. They're currently being discussed, and I think it's very critical that we have a county commissioner that has a strong financial background that can look at how we're going to finance each one of these projects because we're borrowing against future revenue streams from the tax incentive agreements, not current money. Um, and also how we intend to disperse those amounts of money over the next several years. And I think my background lends itself very well to doing so. All right, final result. I'm actually holding the general election uh, ballot in my hand. It states on here, ballot issue 1A, capital improvement projects by the Board of County Commissioners. It's also a line that it's going to fund a downtown youth sport complex. We already have Runyon Field for it. I say that we should have used this 1A or the tax. If we're going to take the taxes away from the people, we should have funded a jail and done it correctly. Okay. We'll move on to our next question. And Brian, you'll handle this one first. The current county commissioners, Sal Pace and Terry Hart, have been on the board together since January 2013. And they're also longtime Democrats in the community. Um, how are you going to fit in with these two guys? Are you saying that because I'm a Republican? <laughs> just, it's just a thought. <laughs> you know, I'll work with anybody, white, black, Hispanic, Republican, Democrat, unaffiliated. I'm going to work with anybody. You know, like I've stated before, and, and, and the reason why, you know, Garrison liked to point that out in my opening announcement, I have ran for office. This is my fourth time. I love this community. I think if we're going to move forward, we're going to have to get along. We're going to have to put party politics aside and work together. If we continue drawing the line in the sand, guess what? We'll be having this talk again next year and the year after and the year after because Pueblo is just staying flat. We're not going anywhere. I would work with South Pace. I'll work with Terry Hart, um, Republican and Democrat. It doesn't matter to me. I look forward to it. I'll also work with Taylor. Uh, the district attorney as well, okay. and even our county coroner. <laughs> okay. Garrison, for you, the, the question is a little bit different in that sure. you'll be a newcomer, and these are two longtime experienced politicians. How are you going to fit in with that group? Sure. Well, I think I'll do extremely well, and I think the reason is exactly because of my experience. Um, in working for the consulting firm that I do, um, we consult not just here in the United States, but across North America, across 
uh, the globe, actually. Um, and when I go to work, I work with folks from India, folks from Haiti, folks from Brazil, uh, folks from Mexico. I'm often on the phone uh, with some of my coworkers from Uruguay. And my job, uh, which at times is being a project manager in very high-paced, project-based environments, is to deliver, is to deliver multi-million dollar projects. And what I would state is that I have found a great way of working together with people from all cultural backgrounds uh, from across the world and finding a way to bring the very best out of those around me. So when I think when we look at serving as a county commissioner with Commissioner Hart and Commissioner Pace and most importantly the other county employees that are going to be at work every day as well, I think that my background, my demeanor, my temperament, the way in which I've run this campaign is uh, the perfect fit for what we need in the district you see. Brian? Mr. Henson, you used the word um, pretty good, fit in. Um, Pueblo's been controlled by the Democrat Party for 50 plus years. I look at that and sit there and shake my head and wonder, wow, okay, 50 plus years. We have the highest energy rates in the state. We have a public safety system that's failing. We have schools that are on accreditation alert and possibly can be taken over by the state. So fit in, I won't fit in. I will work, but I will not fit in. I will make Pueblo County a lot better place. I'll work with the people, but I won't fit in because fitting in gets us in the mess that we're in right now. Master Bubba? Yeah, I'd like to make one key point, um, and that is uh, not just fitting in or working well with your colleagues, but it, it relates to understanding the role of what a county commissioner actually is. I've been running for this role for a long time. Uh, my application out there has been uh, in the public's hands uh, to serve as your next county commissioner for almost two years now. Um, now, when we something I've heard you recite over and over is education, how you intend to, how that's a polarizing issue, uh, absolutely makes a great headline, and that's something that we need to turn around. Um, I personally know the importance of education. That's something that my mother stressed to me for many years. But when we look at the role of a county commissioner, I don't sit up here and claim to solve the problems in our educational system. I intend to support every teacher, every school administrator, every student, but I think my job is more as a county commissioner is ensuring that those students have good paying jobs, careers, benefits, and can build a life here in Pueblo County. So we need to be sure that when we talk about some polarizing issues that we understand um, what role you're running for you know, at this time and how you can be effective in delivering those promises. Okay, next question, Garrison, you'll handle this one. Sure. You sure? Pretty sure. You didn't look like it. Pretty sure. On security? One more, one more <laughs> each. Go ahead. Mr. Ortiz, I, I, I'm happy to work with uh, the education system here in Pueblo. You know, if we win this race, we've been, a, we've been a, an underdog since I entered this race. Everybody says, why, why, why? I want to serve. I continue doing that. If we can pull this off and win this election, I think we'll be able to walk in and work with the educators, the school board members on both 60 and 70, along with our city council representatives, show up to a, a, a PACOG meeting with a little bit of force, knowing that this guy got elected, he wants to get stuff done for the community. That's what I'm going to do. So if education's in there, I understand it's not the role, but I will work with the educators to make sure that they do have good paying jobs. I'm glad that you bring the good paying jobs up, because as we know, we're losing those good paying jobs. How are we losing them? At one time, the steel mill had over 1,200 employees over the last couple of years. We're down to 450. We have, I, I just toured the facility out there today, uh, Publoplex. We have a lot of opportunity out there. But if we don't focus around education, guess what? We're not going to fill Publoplex. We have to be able to think ahead of the schedule and keep working forward. We have the chemical depot. That thing will be done in six to eight years. How are we going to make sure that they have good paying jobs right here in Pueblo? It's going to focus with education. If I have to sit on both sides of it, I will. Garrison, final rebuttal? Yeah, uh, I'll just finish in saying that I think 
everybody agrees that we're going to support education in one way or another uh, when the opportunity presents itself. Um, and when, Mr. Mater, you talk about being the underdog, I, I know that feeling all too well um, because I, I didn't get just to, uh, I just didn't have the ability to jump into this general election. You know, I came through uh, a long political process. I, I fought long and hard through a very uh, competitive field of very well qualified candidates. Uh, and I think our message has rang loud and clear here in this community that this is a brand new, le uh, brand new uh, leadership here. And this is what Pueblo County, I think, has been looking for for some time now. Okay, our next question, Garrison, you'll answer this one first. Pueblo, uh, the city of Pueblo especially, but also Pueblo County, we've seen some problems we've just never dealt with before. We've seen just increasing um, uh, violence in our streets. We've seen uh, what officials describe as a heroin epidemic. How can you, as, as a county commissioner, address some of these issues? Sure. Well, public safety is, I think, one of the most paramount concerns here in Pueblo County at the moment. Um, it is our biggest uh, inhibitor to attracting new business. I mean, it's our largest impediment to attracting new growth and also keeping the business that we currently have here as well. Um, I intend to fund public safety. I have outstanding working relationships with the two uh, departments of, uh, that deal with law enforcement in our, um, in our county. Um, and when we talk about the local heroin epidemic, I intend to fund um, you know, the different programs out in the community that are trying to combat um, the heroin epidemic at its access point. Um, I think that we need to take a holistic approach when we address the heroin problem um, because some of these folks are isolated. Um, I think we need to understand kind of not addressing why they're there, but kind of, you know, throughout the years and the course of their lives, how can we find a, a proactive approach? I think with public safety, heroin use, um, getting on the front side of the problem is imperative. And I think that comes with talking to the experts in those related fields and working well with them. But when we talk about solving these issues, I think it's going to take uh, a very diplomatic approach uh, from a candidate that can work just across the community and is going to be solution focused. And that's my background. I look at process, I find solutions, uh, and I do it and I try to take um, all the politics and all that stuff out of it. So I think I'll be uh, very effective in doing those things if afforded the opportunity to serve you. Okay. Brian? Can you repeat that question one more time? Sure. Um, the city of Pueblo especially, but also parts of Pueblo County, we're experiencing things we've never really had to deal with, the increasing uh, violence in our community and uh, what officials have described as a heroin ep epidemic. What can the county commissioners do to deal with those things? Isn't that because we all fit in for the last 50 plus years? <laughs> you know, a lot of this comes up with, it starts at home, parenting, um, making sure that the parents are involved with their children. Uh, we can't fund this. It comes from the heart of the parents that are out there uh, bringing kids into the world. My wife is pregnant to this day, and I look forward to making sure that we can read a book and uh, to show the values of it. We just uh, voted in Amendment 64. We're introducing a, another substance within our community. I just hope to God that in 25 years, uh, heroin won't be just the okay to go ahead and use it. Let's vote it in for tax bases. Um, I, I think uh, the heroin academic is a, is a huge problem. It's, it's really huge with me because of the fact that I've received several Facebook messages, uh, comments, text messages on parents that are saying, Brian, um, my son's using, what can I do? Um, I, I make a couple calls to try to find out, and I find out that there's no beds, there's nothing available out there. We need to make sure that those beds are available, we have the doctors to treat these, these people that, that need help. Um, most important, I just read the other day on a Facebook post of a friend and, and, and watched a mother cry because her son just overdosed. He was 20 years old. Um, so the heroin academic, it's here, it's real, it's alive. We need to make sure that we get funded on the federal level with some grants. I think with uh, building a jail, we need to make sure that we have some beds for these uh, heroin people that need, that need this type of help. Uh, that would be the main thing when we're designing the jail. We need to make sure that this academic is there and taken care of. Garrison? Uh, no rebuttal. No rebuttal. Any other thoughts, Brian? No, thank you. Okay. 
We'll move to our final question, and let's see, Brian, you'll answer this one first. At the end of the day, voters have to decide between two individuals. Why should they vote for you and not for your opponent? You know, Mr. Ortiz keeps bringing up that he has a financial background, and, and for that, education's huge, and it's a huge part of my, my life. Unfortunately, I chose a different route at 14 years old. I decided I was going to become a roofing contractor, started roofing houses, and, and learning a trade. That trade's got me where I'm at today. There's been a lot of ups. There's been a lot of downs. I went through the uh, biggest economic development disaster of all time. I was pretty proud because while we were uh, fighting to make sure my employees had paychecks uh, week to week and making sure payroll cleared and, and running to the banks, to, uh, and I was scared. I was wondering, how am I going to feed these people? What's going to happen? Um, my opponent doesn't have that real life experiences. I got to see what was going on when somebody lost their house because they lost their job back in 2008. My opponent was 18 years old. Now granted, he has his education and I respect it 100% and, and more power to him. It's evidently got him where he's at. He's, he's a smart kid, I'll, I'll give him that. But I think I have this real life experience to help move us forward, to change something at the, at the instance because as we know and what we all found out in 2008, this economy doesn't last forever, it can change overnight. I remember having a receivables of $7 million to the very next day filing with attorneys to try to recoup some of our money and having bankruptcies over $900,000 to sitting there scrambling going, now what are we gonna do? It's gonna take somebody to do that. I think I'm that person for that and I, I look forward to the, the challenge. Garrison? Sure. Uh, I'd like to point out that you know there are other ways to contribute to the community other than being in elected office. I, I think there's plenty of opportunities to do so. Um, but if we want to talk about real life experience, and I think you mentioned this, Mr. Mater, uh, I think the day after the primary that I was 18 years, 18 years old in 2008. Um, some simple math can tell you that. But I don't think people came here to hear how old I was uh, back uh, in 2008 when everybody went through tough times. Uh, because, you know, I myself did as well. Um, you know, I've come through quite a bit. And I remember I sat in an interview probably about six months ago, and they asked me, what is the biggest challenge to address? And I said, that's the cultural issue that we have here. And I said, what really broke my heart is when we saw in that New York Times article, uh, that child that um, had been, was in a family that had a history of gangs and gang violence. And I said, and I looked at them and, and they said, how did you do everything that you've done at such a young age? And I said, well, I said, when I look at myself and that kid in that article, there really wasn't a whole lot that separated us at that age. The difference was what was around me. I had a wonderful grandmother. I have wonderful grandparents who instilled in me the importance of education from day one. My grandmother always told me, uh, Garrison, you may not have the best hand dealt to you, but work hard and treat everybody with, res with respect around you and you'll do well. Um, I've come through a lot to be here, not just on the stage tonight, but to find myself in a position to give back to my community. And I think there's no question that that is exactly the reason that I'm running. I think that's exactly why I've campaigned with passion and made it to this point. And that's what I intend to do uh, and the approach I intend to bring as a county commissioner. Any other thoughts, Garrison? No. Okay. We'll do our closing remarks now. You may recall that um, Garrison won the coin toss. He elected to conclude the event. So we'll have closing remarks first from Brian Mader. Brian? Thank you. Thank you for everybody that's sitting here tonight in the audience and of the many that are watching from home. What a great evening. I hope you learn more about me and understand that I love Pueblo. And I will work tirelessly to make Pueblo County a better place to live, work, and play. I want to thank the audience and, send, and, and extend a sincere thanks to all the families that have joined us from home. I want to thank Mr. Henson and the 2020 Commission for facilitating this forum tonight. I am who I am. I bring honesty and real work ethics to this campaign. For over 20 years of running a successful business, I bring the passion of service. I also bring the passion of service to, to this community, and I'm blessed to have friends like you standing with me. As your current county, as your current, as your county commissioner, 
I will have a lot of hard work ahead of me, and I am ready to serve. I see an opportunity to bring a positive change, and I will be the leader that will unit our great county to, a better, to better the lives of every citizen. I know we must engage everyone if we are to be successful and recreate our community to compete and recre to recreate uh, new jobs. I care deeply, like I've said before, for Pueblo County. I'm committed to leading with integrity, making decisions based on good data, listening to all concerned citizens, and actively seeking, seeking positive solutions. I appreciate having the community support and will work a cohesive with a, co a cohesive community that will move forward together. Before I say goodnight, I want to thank my family, especially my wife. One, thank you for not having the baby tonight. We didn't have to rush to the hospital. <laughs> I would appreciate your support and respectfully request your vote this November. Good night, and may God bless each and every one of you. We'll now have closing remarks from Garrison Ortiz. I would like to close tonight's forum in simply saying thank you. I'd like to say thank you to all of my family, my friends, uh, my supporters, and my team. Uh, thank you to all of those who have knocked on doors, made phone calls for us, and campaigned on my behalf. I would like to say also thank you to uh, the good people of this community that along this journey have offered a helping hand, a word of advice, or a warm embrace. But most of all, thank you for all the thoughts and prayers that I know have come my way this past year. Because campaigning is tough, politics are tough, and I would like to thank all of those that, that have continued to remain respectful throughout all of the local political discourse. As I said before, it's been a long journey to make it here to this stage tonight, but I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that throughout this campaign, we have communicated clearly that there is a, a, an obvious choice here this November. Because if you really want fresh uh, ideas and you want new perspective, as we often hear, well then this November, you have a choice. And if you want innovative thinking and you believe that somebody with a strong budgeting and financial background should be handling county finances, well then you have a choice. And if you want someone who is experienced in long range financial planning and is committed to the fiscal future of the county well beyond their tenure in office, well then you have a choice. And if you believe that our young leaders are our future and the words wait your turn don't resonate with you either, well, then you have a choice. And voters of Pueblo County, I am that choice, and I am your candidate. And as some of my opponents may say, if you think that the status quo has to go, well, then don't vote for the uh, candidate in this race that touts experience as 40 plus years in county politics. And if you want real ideas and you want new results, then vote for the candidate that has in-depth knowledge of the issues, has a real plan with specifics, and has the working relationships in this community to produce those real results. So when you go to vote for your next county commissioner in District 2 this November, when you go to mark your ballot, I urge you to vote for the candidate that has a quality education, strong budgeting experience, and values to go with it. I urge you to vote for a candidate that is running for this office as their first choice, and I urge you to vote for the candidate that will stand up and lead Pueblo County towards its very best and brightest future. I urge you to vote for me and ask humbly for your vote to be your next county commissioner. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone for joining us tonight. That concludes the event. Drive safe, be careful, good night. <laughs>